Do you want to take your DSLR videos to the next level? Awesome, because in this video, we're going to be sharing 10 tips and tricks that you can apply today, coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And we're out here in Las Vegas. I'm with some Las Vegas vloggers, Kyle and McKenna Gott. And uh, we're gonna be shooting some video clips today and I wanna share some tips. So we're actually using a Canon T7i and this video is actually brought to you by Canon. Super pumped to be partnering with them for this project. But we're gonna be sharing all these tips that really you could use with any DSLR to get better footage, to get cool effects. And so let's dive into them right now. So tip number one is we're gonna start by picking our frame rate. And actually we're shooting on a T7i here. So we could do 30 frames a second, but I wanna do 60 frames a second because that's gonna allow us to do slow motion later. So whatever you wanna do before you start shooting, if you want that film look, you can shoot in 24 frames a second. Some people like that, but again, for us, slow motion. So we're going with 59.94 or 60 frames a second so we can do slow-mo. Tip number two is getting your settings right. Now, if you're just starting out with DSLR video, you can shoot on auto and you can get great results. But for us, we're gonna be shooting on manual. We've clicked the camera over to video mode and we're gonna set up our settings so that we get as smooth a video as possible. Let's check it out. So once you've set your camera to manual mode, what you wanna do to get smooth footage is double the frame rate with your shutter speed. So if you're shooting in 30 frames a second, you'd want your shutter speed to be 60. But because we're shooting in slow motion, 60 frames a second, we're actually gonna want that shutter speed to be 125, which is as close as we can get to double. Then our aperture, we're gonna go as wide as possible since we're shooting in the shade here. And then for ISO, we're either gonna set that as low as possible, or it's also great to just put ISO on auto and then the camera can figure out uh, the rest of the perfect exposure settings so that not only do you get smooth movement, but you also get direct lighting. Okay, so we have our shutter speed figured out. We've got our manual settings set up. Tip number three is just decide what your white balance is gonna be. Now, a lot of times when we're shooting with Canon cameras, we just use auto white balance because it's usually really accurate. And so we'll do that for a lot of this shoot. But there's also a way to shoot custom white balance, even with things in your environment. So let's set that up really quick, just using a little bit of the white on this wall. So in order to set custom white balance, I'm just gonna go to photo mode. I'll turn on live view so you can see it. I'm gonna take a picture of the wall here. And then when we go into menu, we could set our custom white balance according to this image. Then when we step back into our camera settings here, we can go over to our custom white balance setting. And now it is rendering these colors based off the white balance in this exact lighting right here. However, again, if you're just getting started, auto white balance is great. In fact, that's what we're gonna be shooting with right now. All right, the next tip is picking your autofocus mode. Now, I love dual pixel autofocus on Canon cameras because it's so good in video mode. It really always gets tack sharp focus. It's great at motion tracking. And a lot of what we're shooting with is face tracking so that we can capture their faces. But right now, we're gonna switch it to a flex zone mode, which is gonna allow me not only to um, get autofocus on non faces, like inanimate objects, but I'm also gonna use it to tap the screen to do a shot from McKenna's ring to McKenna's face. And because I don't want it to be tracking her face only, I'll have total control because of the flex zone autofocus. The next tip is to use stabilization. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Number one, even if you just lock your elbows against your body when shooting video and add a couple points of contact, you can stabilize the shot a little bit. Now what's nice is there is image stabilization built into this lens, so that helps a little bit. 
but if you can add more stabilization, even better. So I also love using the strap because now you've essentially got four points of contact. You've got both arms and these two straps on either side that can really remove shake as you do some movements. And then of course, using a tripod or even a simple monopod can really help you get a stabler shot, but still introduce some movement. So now I'm shooting over Kyle's shoulder and capturing McKenna, but you can see I'm just handheld here. Pretty smooth, because I've got maybe decently steady arms, but a monopod or some other stabilization could really help me here. So let's check out the difference, because this is just handheld. Okay, and now I'm on the monopod and I've got the strap on my neck as well, so I'm kind of combining some of these stabilization methods. And I'm, I am talking here, which could add a little bit of shake because it's on my neck. Um, but you can see how much shake has been removed by using a little stabilization. That is definitely the goal. You know, one of the reasons why I love monopods is because if you're like shooting a wedding or you're at an event and you want to get some movement and you need to hustle, maybe run in front of the couple or run in front of your subject, you can do that. Put your leg on the ground really quick and then get smooth footage on the fly. All right, the next tip is using the rule of thirds. Now, what's cool is you can go into the camera here, into the menu, turn on the grid display three by three, and it basically cuts the screen into three parts. And so we're gonna pull an audio clip right now of McKenna, and she could be centered, and that can look pretty good, but rule of thirds kind of puts her off to one side, and the goal is to get the black uh, bar line grid going basically right between her eyes for a cool shot dynamic juxtaposed against this wall here. So the next tip is use an external mic for better audio whenever you're doing video with your DSLR. Okay, so first of all, let's hear how it sounds with just the on-camera mic. Right now you're hearing the on-camera mic. So I had been talking to a recruiter and figured I should learn how to do some things for myself if I was going to join the military. So I searched how to march and I actually came across Kyle's video. All right, so that was the on-camera mic, but we have one of the Rode video mics right now that comes with the uh, T7i Creator Kit. And let's see the difference it makes for the audio. And now you're listening to the audio from an external mic. So believe it or not, Kyle and I actually met because of YouTube and we got married nine days after meeting for the first time. For the next tip here, let's get that blurry background that everybody wants, right? Now, with the kit lens in your camera, it can be a little bit challenging because the aperture is not very fast, but the way you want to do it is you want to zoom in as much as possible on your lens and then go as low as aperture as possible on your lens. In this case, zoomed all the way in, we're at 55 and the aperture is 5.6. Now, that has some pretty good results, however, I recommend, if you really want to get that blurry background, to pick up the Canon Nifty 50, a super good budget affordable lens that has an aperture of 1.8. So check out some of the footage from this lens at 1.8 to get that nice, creamy, blurry background. All right, so I hope that those tips were valuable. And actually, if you wanna check out Kyle and McKenna's vlog channel, we'll link it up in the description below. And also, if you wanna see any of the gear that we use in this video, we'll put a list in the YouTube description. Question of the day, what is one of your biggest tips for shooting better videos with your DSLR? Let me know in the comments section. And remember, some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comments section. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And to see other videos in our DSLR tips series, just click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, just click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.